we've got, well, we can't get a bigger guest than the one, one we've got today. No, actually, this is a great guest. Uh, you've probably read about him in the paper. Yeah, well, you're God, he's called God, yes. basically. Yes. I think you will, Pam. Well, he thinks he is. He's uh, promised a second coming. Today could, could be the day. Could that be the day? That man there controversially claims that he is Jesus Christ and that 2,000 years after the crucifixion, he's come back to Earth. Not only that, have a look at this. The lady who's with them. Uh, that's his other half. She is Mary Magdalene. She says that's who she is. She says she remembers watching in horror as Jesus was nailed to the cross. We're talking 2,000 years ago. They believe it. Will you believe it? It is an incredible story. Really looking forward to talking to them this morning. And if you could put a question to Jesus, what would it be? You know, it's the interview that we've got coming up. We will be able to say, We've talked to Jesus, a man who believes he is Jesus. And you get, you must admit, now come on, you must admit from your point of view, you're really looking forward to it. I have this. a very open mind about this. I'm fascinated to hear what they say. I'm trying not to judge. You know, your initial reaction no, no, is no, no, like, no. I know, no, no, you're frightened because you are basically the devil incarnate. You are worried that Jesus is going to find you <laughs> out. That's that I'm basically, a sinner. That I'm that's a sinner. That's basically what yes. is going to happen. Anyway, it's fascinating. This is here. fascinating. AJ and Mary, they believe that they are Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Will they convince you? Now, according to the Bible, Jesus promised a second coming. And uh, this man, this is AJ, AJ claims that he is that second coming he is Jesus he's called controversy claiming he is Jesus Christ and that 2,000 years after he was crucified he's come back to earth to spread the love of God he's not alone in the studio this morning his girlfriend uh, believes that she's Mary Magdalene and she says she remembers watching the crucifixion watching in horror as Jesus was nailed to the cross this is absolutely fascinating uh, first of all what, what do I call you? Do I call you Jesus, my Lord? What, what do I call you, AJ? <laughs> Definitely not my Lord. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm nobody's Lord. Just call me AJ or, like, my name is Jesus, obviously, but most people don't feel comfortable calling me Jesus, so I'm happy with that. Do you call him Jesus, Mary? On occasion. On occasion I do, yeah. 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 How does it feel, though, Jesus talking to us today and everybody watching at home and knowing that 99.9% .9 of that audience are mocking you, are laughing at you, are saying, this man is bonkers and she must be as bad as him. <laughs> well, you know, I've experienced that kind of treatment most of my life in the first century, as well as the life now. Uh, we, we also receive that kind of treatment. So, and we're fairly used to that kind of treatment. I think when the majority of people actually hear or listen to what we say, then of course they they have have a much a deeper interest in what's going on, and often they is the second coming more difficult than the first coming. Um, no, it's I mean no one's going to kill you this time around. I suppose from that hopefully. point of view, <laughs> it's better. Certainly, there are a lot more opportunities in this coming than the, in the first coming. Obviously, in the first coming, we could only spend time sharing with people through the word of mouth. Whereas in this coming, we've got things like, you know, technology to share the truth with people, which is something that we do quite a lot of nowadays. Through what? Through Facebook and Twitter and social media? Or? No, um, we only do it through YouTube or through our own website. So yeah. we, we only share those things and it's all for free. No, nobody has to pay anything to listen to the YouTube channel or, or to get anything from the website. But there's almost a thousand hours of material because there has been that accusation, hasn't there, is that, that people pay and you have DVDs and cassettes to listen to and books. It's a big cult So that, yeah, people are saying, oh, you're just creating a cult um, and you're exploiting people. Yeah, that's what they say, but the reality is that we do everything for free and we receive donations from people, obviously, because that's the only way we live. We don't have any other form of income. But usually we receive donations from people that are happy with what they're hearing. Or, or find that it's changing their life in some way, and so they don't know. And we just want you to, to listen to what uh, Jesus and Mary are saying today, and if it affects you one way or the other, or you're just going to be completely dismissive from this from the, from the outset, let's accept what he has to say at face value, and let's listen to what the man has to say. But I would have thought, as a courtesy, if you are who you say you are, would you not have called upon the big Christian leaders and said, hello, Holy Father the Pope, just to let you know, I'm here, I'm back in town. Well, my policy has always been, for the last 2,000 years, never to force myself onto people. So I would never force myself onto the Pope or force myself onto a religious leader to have a discussion. 
If they want to have a discussion with me, I'm very open to having a discussion with them. And have they them. made any contact with you? No, at this point, no, because they view me, as most people do, as some kind of cult leader who wants to do Do you know how you else. could change that? You could change that by, for instance, these glasses of water in front of us. <laughs> you could change that by turning these into wine. You could change that by... People are going to say, you know what they're going to say, they're going to say, go on then, Jesus, impress me, show me a miracle. Yes, well, in the first century, whenever I, somebody wanted me to impress them, I generally didn't. Um, but it, the reality is that it wasn't until I was 31 in the first century that I could perform any miracles at all. And I never turned water into wine, actually. That's a, that's a myth. But uh, I did perform other miracles in the first century once I became at one with God. And as I've said to people nowadays, I'm not yet at one with God again. I've got to go through the same process that I went through in the first century. Once I become at one with God again, we expect, both of us expect to be able to perform what people might call miracles. But to us, they're just the realities of being at one with God. Gosh, there's so much you, I want to grew, talk to you yeah, about. Yeah, you grew up in a very small community in, in South Australia. I did. So when did you believe, when did you think, I am Jesus? Well, I, I've had memories all of my life, of my entire 2,000 years of life, but it's been very difficult to assimilate them psychologically uh, into my current life. So that didn't happen until I was 40, uh, or just after 40 years of age. But before then, I've had many... 40 or 14? 40. 40. Yeah. And I'm 50 now, so, um, so 10 years ago, around about. And, and, but I've had many memories uh, from the age of two onwards. But so when I, you say memories, yeah. what sort of things are we talking about? Uh, memories of my life, uh, uh, of and what happened death. in the first century, my death, yeah. They your were resurrection. Yes. Have people ever said to yeah. you that that could just be a dream? You know, we all have dreams that we've been something, been somewhere, been somebody else. Certainly, um, certainly they could be those things and, and I've spent a lot of time hoping they were actually uh, because I realised that uh, if I said what I'm currently saying that obviously people would generally respond with laughter and derision initially and so of course uh, I, I, I myself even hoped that they weren't real. But, but of course Mary then you come into the picture and yes. you believe you two were meant to be. What do you remember of Jesus first time around? In the first century when yeah. we knew each other? Ah, I remember him as very similar to how he is now, a very humble man, a very kind man who gave a lot to others without expectation or uh, demand upon them. See, a lot of Someone. people would believe he was a celibate, and then there is a theory, of course, <laughs> that he wasn't, that he wasn't celibate, that, yes. he, that he would have uh, engaged with Mary Magdalene, um, for instance. Well, he did. <laughs> we, we got married in the first century. I was still uh, a bit before then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But um, to people who, who would be Christian and who would be offended by that sort of belief, what would you say and what is your, what is your message to the world today? You want to go? <laughs> well, um, the primary message is that there's two forms of love. There's the love that comes out of the individual given to another and there's God's love that can enter the individual. And God's love has the power to transform not only the individual into becoming a more loving person, but also transform the world. And, and what we're trying to encourage people to do is to engage this process with God of receiving love from God and then noticing the changes that occur inside of themselves and then sharing that love with others. So that's our primary message. And why have you decided to tell people now that you believe you're Jesus or that you are Jesus? Well, I've been telling people ever since I realised, which was nearly 10 years ago, it's just now there's more media interest, I suppose, than there were, was before. And as soon as I realised that I was Jesus, I felt I had to be honest with people about my identity, so that's what I did. And so, but in terms of sharing the divine truth with them or God's truth with them, as soon as I, ha all of my life, I've desired to do that. And I've spent a lot of my life trying to share what I felt was God's truth. And do you others. talk to God the Father? Are you in communication with the Father? Um, yes, but not in the manner that most people believe. The, the language of God is love, and the communications with God have to throw, flow through the connection with love. Okay. So. Jesus, I'm sorry um, to wind you up or cut you off. Sure. Um, forgive me. We head to the news. We've got to do that. Uh, it has been amazing meeting you. Thank you very much indeed. What do you think?
just get an amazing reaction uh, to the man who believes he was Jesus just before the break, Matthew. Yes. Okay, David Carriage, uh, this is an outrage. I'm incensed that AJ thinks he's Jesus. And Pam Parrish, brilliant pun name there, okay, he's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy. But we've got some people who are warm to him as well. Carly Watkins, good for them. Let them think that they what they want as long as they are happy. And Christian, you've got some interesting points of how they warm to them, haven't you? Some Exa stats. Exactly. So basically, um, before he started talking, 100% negative towards him. And as he started talking, it started gaining some popularity, and 19% of all the comments were uh, positive or showing positive leanings towards him now. That's okay. so what we're saying, weren't we? Is just try and keep an open mind until you've heard him speak. I mean, obviously, yeah. there are people with very deep religious beliefs that, that mm. won't want to believe that. Well, there was, that, a, there but... was a tranquility about it, and his story is fascinating, whether you believe it or not. Uh, you know, we had an hour to talk to him. It would have been great to find out his memories of the, the crucifixion mm. and his life in the first century and that mm. sort of thing. We but, can't knock uh, it. It's I not every day you get to talk to God. No, it's not. It's not at all. And Josh Bradley's got a good idea to test him. If he can turn, wa turn water into wine, then I believe him, and I would be happy to be his business partner. He'd be welcome yeah. at my barbecue <laughs> yeah. anytime you like. So oh, yeah, but thank that. you very much for your comments. Yeah,